All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the GSMC Wrestling Lower End Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Just kind of reflect on what we talked about. We had our WWE uh, Friday Night SmackDown uh, review. We had our WWE uh, Monday Night Raw preview. Then we jumped into uh, men's um, power rankings uh, in terms of wrestling. And now let's move on to the women. So uh, I don't know. So like you, like I said before, hope you guys love that. Uh, you know. <laughs> I think of, uh, you know, my man, Mark Briscoe. So let's go ahead and jump on into number 10. We have, let's see, it's still not working. Damn it. Uh, so, yeah, let's go back to this. You have to see this ugly mug again. Sorry. <laughs> At number 10, I have Roxanne Perez. I love Roxanne Perez, but uh, for the women's power ranking, ultimately, I feel like uh, her time might be up as WWE NXT pretty soon. Obviously, you have NXT Battleground Kenny coming forward. It's going to be interesting to see if she holds on to the belt. At number nine, I have Laura Valkyria. Valkyria, ever since she made it onto the WWE Monday Night Raw roster, being drafted by Adam Pierce. She's been pretty impressive. She's been pretty impressive. I want to move her up forward, but she recently lost the Queen of the Ring. But I'm not trying to throw shade at that. Having her here at number nine, I feel like is, you know, in, as compared to thousands of other women's wrestlers, I feel like, you know, that's pretty good. At number eight, I had Becky Lynch. And although Becky Lynch has lost her championship, although she is a free agent with the WWE, I have her on this list mostly because she's she kind of, she's the dealer. She kind of has her fate in her own hands. Can she get a handsome contract by Tony Khan and she heads to AEW? Could possibly be it. I know a lot of people are like, you know what? She's probably going to stay with her husband in WWE. But, you know, like Seth Rollins. Becky Lynch, they've kind of achieved everything they kind of had in terms of professional wrestling in WWE. If they want to fight more from like a world, you know, wrestling spectrum where they're fighting the best in the world, the smart thing would probably go to AEW. AEW recently merged with New Japan Professional Wrestling, recently merged with uh, Ring of Honor. And uh, I feel like only in a matter of time, they're going to merge with like another wrestling brand and stuff like that. So would it really make you know, would it really be that crazy if Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins end up on AEW or in New Japan Professional Wrestling? Because, like, if they do leave the WWE, I feel like the WWE would be a little like, uh, well, that's why this is a huge, big-ass maybe. And Seth Rollins has kind of been Triple H's guy for the longest time, ever since, you know, you had him cashing his money in the bank against Brock Lesnar and, you know, Roman Reigns. Was like, Seth Rollins wants that title. Like, you kind of put a huge target on Seth Rollins back but I feel like he's not going to lead Triple H in any way so you know I definitely think that they're going to stay you know right where they are all right so we have uh, at number seven we have Liv Morgan and I do love Liv Morgan she's cool and all I think she's great right now but I feel like just like I was talking about with Damian Priest she's kind of around that same area uh, she's kind of a bridge champion. She's a bridge champion. I feel like WWE is kind of looking for uh, kind of like someone to step up to Liv. I know as soon as Rhea Ripley comes back, she's probably going to challenge Liv Morgan. But I feel like once when she does, probably Dirty Dom is going to choose this side and, you know, you know, screw over Rhea Ripley to help Liv Morgan out, which, you know, but that's my opinion. And um, yeah, at number six, I have Mercedes Monet. Mercedes Monet, formerly known as Sasha Banks. Uh, recently became the team, the TBS champion on AEW Double or Nothing. Um, it's not that I don't like her. It's not that I don't like her. I think she won a championship way too fast, especially after a month and a half of just kind of waiting and cutting the same crappy promos over and over and over and over again. But that's just that's that you know that probably wasn't Mercedes. That was AEW. Be like, all right, let's wait, let's wait. You know, let's have this build up. But I feel like the build up was a little too much. So uh, yeah. At number five, I have Athena. Athena, the Ring of Honor World Women's Champion, has been, you know, she's on a historic run. She's killing it. Definitely miss her from WWE NXT, Ember Moon. Uh, but I feel like she has a Ring of Honor Women's Division on her back. That's why I kind of put her so high. At number four, I have Nia Jax. Nia Jax, she's the irresistible force. Nia Jax has, has shot. She has a lot of great things coming her way. I believe that a thousand and ten percent. She's the king. She's the queen of the ring. She has a number one contendership, uh, number one contenders match against uh, Bailey at SummerSlam or Piper Niven, which, you know, it's kind of crazy, but whatever. I feel like at this point in Nia's career, this is her time to strike. I feel like this is her time to kind of, you know, 
to kind of come up from WWE, to kind of come up from the women's division. Nia Jax should be part. She's been a part of the company for so long. I definitely, I am a Nia Jax kind of guy. I think that she's great. I don't think she would ever kind of be like that bloodline or kind of join the bloodline or anything like that. So, um, you know, I don't think WWE would really touch on, you know, women kind of in the bloodline. But that'd be pretty interesting. Maybe Tamina comes back, possibly. But, you know, I don't know. I think that'd be pretty crazy. At number three, I have Bailey, the WWE Women's Champion Bailey. Um, once again, I love Bailey. I feel like she is, uh, ever since she's kind of merged into like this babyface role, I, she doesn't belong as a heel. She doesn't belong in a heel. She she cuts crappy promos. She's not good on the mic. She's not good on thinking on her toes. And I'm not trying to say that because I hate her. I'm not trying to say that because she's bad. I'm not trying to say that because she's not a good wrestler because she is a good wrestler. Bailey is a good wrestler. She's been a wrestling fan her whole entire life. I feel like the best thing for Bailey is to just continue this babyface role. If she drops a championship at any given wwe main event it's not really going to be a surprise but at the same time it's not really going to be in a position where people, people can be like well bailey sucks bailey's terrible at what she does she's not a good champion no because she already established that she's one of the four she's one of the four uh uh you know four horsemen in wwe nxt women's division like she obviously has a, a lot of respect on her back so wouldn't surprise me if Bailey does lose the championship at SummerSlam, but she's just doing it because she's trying to put over other talent. And that's something you definitely should do when she's at her age, when she's kind of had her tenure with WWE, she's kind of had her spotlight. If Bailey kind of has a WWE title run, kind of like, I, I don't want to compare it to the men's, but kind of like a John Cena, because I don't know, I feel like, I don't want to compare apples to oranges here. Because John Cena was amazing. But I feel like Bailey and John Cena at this point are kind of like in the same boat. Like where you kind of had John Cena as that very flamboyant, kind of like this panders to the crowd, tries to get other people over and stuff like that. Which John Cena did at the end of his career. Because before then, he wasn't really game for putting people over him. Because obviously, who would want to be? Who would want to be like, basically, you're trying to be like, this guy's going to get paid more money than I am. This guy's going to get better deals. This guy's going to get the strap on him. He's going to be, you know, he's going to get all the endorsement deals. So that's why, you know, I don't know. I kind of have Bailey in that kind of mode. And number two, at the time, this Tony Storm in AEW Women's World Champion. She's she's amazing. She knows how to cut a good promo. She knows how to talk. She knows how to wrestle. She knows how to get the fans, you know, over and turn the matchup. But one thing that I really do like about Tony Storm is that her ability to kind of, you know, she's the heel. No, she's the baby face. No, she's the baby face. No, man, she's the heel. But that's something that wrestling fans love to ponder. And that's something that, you know, definitely love watching Tony Storm doing what she's, you know, doing in AEW. At number one, of course, it'd be kind of stupid not to have her as number one. You have Jordan Grace, the TNA Knockouts World Champion. She's been on WWE NXT. WWE wants her. TNA wants her. If she was a free agent, which she's not going to be within the year, her contract's up in another year, she would get money. She would be absolutely untouchable. She'd be one of the highest paid women in not just WWE, but probably the world. She's very special. She's absolutely killing it. And uh, being strictly, you know, I know we're running out of time and I hate going over time, but, um, you know, Jordan Grace, definitely the best women's wrestler in professional wrestling right now. So... Um, yeah, hope you guys, uh, you know, kind of sucks the graphics didn't work. I apologize for that. But let's go ahead and move on to our Memorial Day, our Memorial Monday. We go back on, you know, wrestling icons who was passed on. And today we're going to talk about Macho Man Randy Savage. So, hey, do not go anywhere.